and uh, and likewise for guiding product development and process development. Um, again, that's going to be a matter of finding what your biggest impacts are, uh, as well as looking at alternatives, different scenarios, and seeing what the impacts of those are, how they compare, establishing the baselines, and doing other scenarios for what might be possible. Um, so those, those three are kind of all at the same level. Um, and then the highest level of um, detail and depth that you need is supporting product certification. Um, and right now, there, there aren't any widely used uh, certifications that require a uh, life cycle assessment, uh, but there are some that do exist um, and others that are on their way. And so uh, it's going to be a bigger thing as time goes on. And likewise, this brings up the question of do you trust the analysis that somebody else did? Um, and it's some of the important factors are whether they're using product-specific data versus industry average data. Uh, you know, like I said, did they just look up a number in a database somewhere, and did they take the right number from the right database? Were they looking at, say, um, European average data when the product is in fact made in the US or made in China, let's say. Um, and whether it's prepared by an experienced practitioner because LCA does have a lot of subtleties to it and to do it requires a lot of assumptions. Um, just in inherently you have to make assumptions at various points along the way um, and an experienced practitioner will make more intelligent ones than someone who's, who's new at it. Um, and uh, a big factor in whether you trust the analysis is whether it was done to certain industry standards. There is an international standard, ISO 14,040, um, and that's basically the, the bar by which a, uh, a credible LCA is measured. Um, and there's an emerging standard that scientific certification systems here in the U.S. is trying to develop, and that's uh, SES 002. Um, and, of course, the, the best level for credibility is whether the analysis has been verified by a third party, like scientific certification systems or um, another professional organization that's very good at this stuff. So to uh, give more detail on different scenarios that you, that you might be using LCA for, this is an example of telling the background story. It's, um, it's some informational print on a chocolate wrapper uh, developed by uh, this designer Arlene Burt, and it basically tells the story of where your where your chocolate comes from. If you um, I'm going to use the uh, the pointer here, um, so at the beginning it shows you tells you where the coffee came from and uh, tells you that it was uh, organic and fair trade. Then it tells you how many miles it traveled to go to the factory. Uh, once in the factory, tells you the other ingredients and um, tells you how far it traveled again to the supermarket and then gives you a little bit of info on the company, basically. Um, so not much detail, very few numbers, but just gives the customer more of a sense that they know where this product is coming from. And um, the, uh, I think the best book that I've seen on telling the stories of products is called Stuff, The Secret Lives of Everyday Things by a company that used to be called Northwest Environment Watch is now called Sightline Institute. They're a, a nonprofit up in uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, and this is a great book because it basically gives you a life cycle analysis of uh, five or six different everyday things. A cup of coffee, a, a t-shirt, a, a car, a bicycle, a, a computer, and, uh, and I think a hamburger. Um, and um, uh, but it does it not in a dry academic way, but in a narrative kind of way where it's telling you the story of each of these products. Um, it's a bit dated now because it's 10 or, or 
gosh, almost 15 years old, but, um, uh, but I still have yet to see uh, a better book out there. And um, so that's telling the background story. Identifying the biggest impacts, um, this is going to be a fairly typical graph that you would see upon doing a life cycle assessment of something. Um, don't worry about the different colors in the bars for now, but basically all the different bars are different components in the manufacturing of a product. In, in this particular case, uh, this is a hair dryer that I did an analysis for, uh, for a company um, a couple years ago. Um, and as you can see, basically three of the components are, are by far the biggest impacts. Um, and so if you're trying to make decisions about product development or process development, then those are your three biggest targets. And um, the, uh, the units of measure that, uh, that are used for this scale are what's called millipoints. Um, and that's a made-up number, basically. Remember, there's kind of uh, physics in the 1700s here. Um, but so, so what it is, is uh, in this particular methodology, there, there are different methodologies, which we'll get to in a second. But in this particular methodology, um, one point is one one thousandth of an average European's annual environmental impact. Okay, so... Um, kind of a meaningless number um, on the face of it, except that as long as you use that same scale for everything, um, you can use that same scale to measure these different components of the hairdryer against each other, and you can use them to measure this hairdryer against um, your television or, um, or your, your couch or your commute to work in the morning. Um, as long as you use the same scale, uh, it does have meaning in relative terms, just not necessarily in absolute terms. So it ends up being a very useful thing, um, and each methodology has their different way of determining what a point is. Um, and um, so this is that same hair dryer, but all of the bars from the previous screen are wrapped up in here. So this is all of the manufacturing of that hair dryer. Um, and then this is the transportation from sort of uh, from China to an average home in the US, basically. Um, and then this bar over here is the electricity used during the life of the hairdryer. So if you were looking back and uh, trying to see, okay, what are the biggest impacts? What are the, our top priorities for changing the design of this hairdryer? Um, you might think that it was this or this, but in fact, those are still both irrelevant compared to the electricity used during the product's life. Um, and so that would really be the top priority. Um, and for establishing baselines, uh, these are um, uh, different kinds of packaging for, uh, for that same client that I, that I analyzed. 